okay, do you remember that video I made, How to Make a Full Eternity, also known as Converting a Wedding Ring into a Full Eternity Ring? This is my casting 18 karat gold one. So I'm just zigging around it now to clean up the casting. I thought I may as well do a little video because there's uh, a few little things I can mention about working on your castings as I go along. Oil up your drill. Using the same, same tools I used to make it, same techniques. Drilling straight down through the center. I'm just gonna go around it. Don't need quite as much care as before. Keep in mind where you, where you started. Um, you can mark it with a pen if you wanna be really, really um, confident about it. So these holes are, this is a good casting, these holes are really open. Sometimes you'll get a hole that's completely blocked up if you're, if they were quite fine holes. And it's like investment or something from the casting a lot of the time. And your drills don't go through it. And the trick to get it out, rather than trying to break drills and blunt your drills trying to get it out, get a, I've got this little pot I keep lots of broken and worn out phrases in there. Get something you don't need anymore, snap off whatever the end is, and then say I've got a bit of broken drill in there, like bang it out, put it on your, put it on your ring stick, so your ring doesn't go out of shape, and then bang into it with a sharp point, and then maybe get it on a block, and then bang it from the back as well, and then drill it. And that just breaks apart all the stuff that's blocking the hole. That's a good trick and it'll save you a lot of time. And broken drills and blunt drills and whatnot. Oh, I'm gonna do a how to sharpen a drill video. I'll show you how to sharpen a drill in, like from completely blunt. Like I will flatten a drill and get it perfectly sharp in five seconds. There's no fanning about sharpening drills. There's no point in working on a piece, really pushing the drill into it. It's, it's the rotation of the drill which cuts the metal. It's not how hard you push. And there's no point in really battling on with a blunt drill. It is much better just to stop, sharpen it, then continue. Again benefiting from working neatly and accurately when I made it. I don't have to keep checking and adjusting things now, I just, I just open them up where they are. Very fast. Oh, this is too easy. Yep. Get a bit zoomy zoomy on that. These all look all right. I can, I can see a few spots where I can neaten them up, pull them to the center slightly, but they're not bad at all. Now you might be able to tell, I've already worked on the side of this ring. I've flattened it. I cut the sprue off, there's a sprue on the side of it. You gotta love Japanese casters. They don't charge anything extra for spruing things, so I don't sprue anything anymore when I'm sending it to casting. I don't know how they do it, they just stick a bit of wax on it or whatever. And uh, they do it so neatly, they're very careful. The casting has come out good. So I flatten that off, and obviously file out the inside and paper it before you start measuring the size, because there's no point, oh, okay, that needs to be a K, perfect, and then you haven't filed out the inside, because once you've cleaned up the inside, it's gonna go up a bit more. This was K and a half. Right, uh, I'm gonna leave the buffing off the sides until after I've done the phrasing because I'm only gonna end up with little burrs and stuff coming up the sides. So I need now a cylinder phrase that matches the diameter of those. I really need to buy a pack of these cylinder phrases. I think I used one of these. Yeah, that'll work. 
You can, some jewelers I've worked with preferred these kind of, let's see if I've got one to show you. This kind of, it's not bud phrase, it's a flame phrase. It's more of a elliptical shape. Um, you can use that, which gives you quite a beautiful flute, but you have to hold it exactly the right angle and distance every time, otherwise they start to not match. So just to make life easier for myself, I like a, just a straight cylinder phrase. Just zip, zip, zip. This one's got teeth going across, which is not ideal because I don't always get a nice bright, shiny finish inside. But this one fits, so I'm using it. Using this stuff, you might have something similar, or beeswax is just as good, if not better. Now I'm just thinking, might not doing one like this, one like this, da 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 da. I'm just holding it at the right angle, and then I'll rotate the ring and just try and keep working all the way around. Ideally, you go all the way around without stopping. You don't do a few, then get up and go for a cup of tea, and then come back, and then play on your phone for a bit. Just uh, just concentrate, practice focusing and concentrating and working on it continuously. People are too distracted nowadays. Don't even have your phone in the same room, I find helps. I caught myself earlier, about half an hour earlier. I just stopped and looked at Instagram. Like I wasted 10 minutes and I regretted it. I didn't, there's no benefit to that. Gonna loop it, see what's going on with this. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Just when you're doing this with your ring, just make sure you've got that angle the same and they're all nice and straight. Again, I'm thinking about the center of the ring, making sure every single one goes down to the center. Don't start crisscrossing them because then you're making it making it not neat. But again, benefiting from working carefully when I made it and making sure they're all nice and straight and evenly down. If I hadn't have done that, I'd be having to work much more carefully now to straighten them up and adjust them, pull them across, pull them down. I haven't got it now, I just, it's like a look at it, it looks neat all, all the way around. So this one where the sprue was, it's gonna be a bit more work. Just gotta pull it down a bit. There you go, job done. Keep your keep your phrase lubed. Bit of a burr on there. Do a good job because you're gonna be polishing this next. Every single one polished individually has to be before setting. What I'm doing is I'm doing that to brush the dust off so I can see I've done enough phrasing to it. Doesn't need a lot. There you go. Went all the way around. That was quick. I work in fast because it's my my own ring and my own stones. Maybe if you're working for someone, take your time a bit. <laughs> even if you don't, if you, even if you can confidently work very fast, I think employers would rather see you working carefully and maybe slow down a little bit. I don't know. Or it might be complete opposite and just cracking the whip, making you work faster. I don't know. can set these rings without too much trouble but I'm friends with a really good setter so I'm gonna give it to her she's gonna do it for me but it would be cool if I could do the setting and do another video and then I can then I've got the whole this whole ring on on video being made from start to finish whoops but you know people who practice setting all the time are much better than me at setting, obviously. So 
I happily just give it to other people and pay for things to be set. But if you're a jeweler, it does pay to have a few, few certain skills. I'm a nerd, I like all, even all small stones, I like all the facets to line up. Not everyone does that. But I think it's a good, good habit to have attention to detail and all that. Problem is, like this kind of ring, especially this sort of design, you go on Etsy, they're so cheap. Like people are getting them, they all say they're handmade, but they're just, uh, bashed out in China, I think. They're all like 14 carat. Uh, very, very thin and lightweight. Extremely cheap, dodgy quality stones. But China can do quality. I've seen some really good stuff made in China. I swear all the mass-produced stuff by Tiffany and Cartier and that is all China, but don't quote me on that. Okay, I think I've done that. Let me just loop it. was exceptionally quick and easy. This is a 240 grade buff paper. I don't know, I can't see. If you go, I've got one buff stick, which is borderline a file. It's, uh, it's that stuff that builders use in the UK. I just made a buff stick out of it really quick. Because when I've got these like big chunky skull rings I work on a lot, I really start them off, get rid of the file marks with that. However, on this, you're actually cutting in quite severe lines on a ring that I don't want to adjust the dimensions of anymore, so the minimum buffing. So I'd rather do a bit more work on something smoother. In my experience, you don't just buff until it looks buffed. You have to go a little bit more to get rid of any lines you didn't, you can't see. If you loop it, sometimes it looks perfectly buffed that way, but under the 10 times loop, you can still see a few lines go in the opposite direction, which means it needs more buffing because it's, um, it's annoying when you go to polish something and then you just got one or two lines that are showing up. You basically got to stop polishing, go back to this stage, do a bit more buffing, which is uh, wasting time. You can't see, but at the moment. Oh, by the way, this is a uh, this is the next grade down paper I use. This is uh, 1600 paper, which almost almost polishes it. It's kind of polished after this. You don't need this so much on 18 karat 18 karat white, but on platinum, definitely use it. Go to this stage, and then the more the more smooth you can get it by buffing less work there is to do on a polisher motor, which is dirty and dusty job. Especially on platinum, it's really hard to polish out scratches in platinum, so get everything super flat and nice at this stage. I also make, I use these paper discs a lot. Um, I just cut out some of this paper and I super glue it to the back. So I've got double sided discs, so I can turn that around and I can use it to buff things nicely with a disc. If you've got a ring thin at this stage, be careful with it. It is basically, it's just covered in drill holes. I, I reckon you could, I don't know, I don't want to try, but I almost think I've got the power to just squash that and bend it out of shape. In gold is a bit softer, so be careful with it. There's a piece of jewelry, it's perfectly okay for wearing, but 
bear in mind, it's a, a thin band with drill holes all the way around it, so you've, you've got kind of a frame of a ring. And you can do these with slightly bigger dimensions, not with a cut down style setting, like pave this side, and then pave that side, and pave that side. It does work, you can do it. However, the rings are delicate. All right, taking that out. I think I had already buffed this out. Let me get rid of my burrs from my drilling. I was about to mention a minute ago, I'm very cold in this house. I haven't got any heating on. It's like five, six degrees outside, right next to a window. I'm freezing. Uh, I don't have a scarf, so what I've done is I've wrapped my pyjama bottoms around my neck. I'm wearing my pyjama bottoms as a scarf right now. It's actually very comfortable. Homemade one. This was... This was one of these. I think it was a brand new one. And then I just wrapped that smoother 1600 grey paper around it. So it's really big diameter, which is nice when you're doing a ring because it's, uh, it sort of matches the curvature of the inside of the ring nicely. Now what I do is I try and go around keeping it very straight, very parallel to the surface of the ring. But then on purpose, I tilt it a little bit and just go around the ring, just take that corner off ever so gently. You lose a bit polishing as well, but I just get that started. Being a full eternity, there's no there's no chance to size it properly, not without really hacking into it and putting an extra stone in. Uh, taking a stone out, obviously. One trick we do, if we really have to, we don't like doing it, is putting like two almost like rails, like train tracks around the inside. Just a very, everything's nice and rounded and smooth and neatly done, but that can really dramatically make the ring tighter. However, it does, it is the same diameter on the outside, so it, become, it can become uncomfortable when women are wearing it, it's pushing more out towards the other finger, although it fits properly. Um, what else you can do? Yeah, you can round it off more inside to make it sort of slip on a bit easier, but it's quite limited what you can do really with sizing without major work. So just for comfort, I, I round off that inside edge because you can make things, when you've got the ability to make things really accurately and really sharp, you've got to consider really sharp corners are not comfortable, so you almost round them off on purpose. So next stage is... Uh, I already... I went round it once, but I want to make it a bit deeper. Uh, get a very thin cylinder phrase. This was the same one I used when I made the ring. I know it's the same one because the top half is really worn out, so I'm just cutting with that little bottom section. And I still haven't bought any more since I made the ring. Mine's worn out, but I got to resist the temptation to push harder because you can snap that off just with the, with the power of pushing quite easily. When you're doing this, uh, hold it straight, obviously, with the ring, keep it parallel. Should just slot. If it's the same one you had before, it should just move around there quite easily. But I'm lowering it because the lower this goes, the longer your claws are, which is nice. I heard they do, they cast things with the stones in, in these cheap Chinese things. I don't really understand how that's possible. But it makes sense, it would cut down costs and time dramatically. If you could just cast something with stones in it and then just polish it badly and then ship it off to the UK where people just love bargains. And then you can buy one on Etsy. I was looking at them the other day. They're very neat and nice, I guess, but they're so thin. They're like literally one mil. One mil thin. Or one mil stones, it might be. I can't believe the whole thing was one mil. That's one. That's one mil. So the whole ring 
is like half of this. <laughs> There's your one mil full eternity there. No wonder they're cheap. I don't get it. Again, this is spinning, so it's pulling to one side. So I'm trying to resist that moving across and just go lower. But it doesn't help, it's so blunt. And you can't sharpen the phrases. The guys to work with said he could sharpen drills blindfolded. But we never tested him on that. But we just kind of laughed, it's sort of funny. But when you're good at it, I can kind of understand where he's coming from because it is an element of doing it by feel rather than just looking at what's going on. You just kind of know your angles are right and you just zing away. But yeah, I'm going to do a video. Sharpen a drill in five seconds, no problem. That's almost too much time. Got the techniques. Blunt tools, they uh, they balls you up a bit. It's harder to work neatly. If that was sharp, just brr, 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 go down to the exact height I want. I can, when I move that across, I can feel it's higher in sections. Come on. Okay, so technically that's ready for Polishing. Oh no, it's not. I'm gonna touch up my holes at the back. All right, for this one, shall I use this? You can use a bud phrase or a flame phrase. You can touch it. What you do is you have it in your pendant drill. Touch it that side or that side. Just whatever you need to do to get it neat. Yeah, there's a few I can tidy up. Don't put it all the way in, have it kind of out a bit, just so you can cover the distance going across without without that hitting the top of the ring. Uh, just minor, I'm not even digging it right in, I'm just using the point to kind of move them across a little bit. Also, some of them, they just don't look round after casting sometimes, you just need to, you're just touching, you're not even adjusting the hole, you're just top touching the top edge, like the corners of the hole. You want them to be evenly spaced, the same size, down the middle. I'm not the world's best at this. My jewellery training is very like fine jewellery, everything's super accurate, but that doesn't suit my personality. Like when I'm making stuff for myself, like this I was working on earlier, I work more like a kind of artist. It looks like a, looks like a tennis ball at the moment. But I don't mark it out carefully and then put a tiny ball phrase in and then drill it and then open up the drill hole. I've just got the size of the stone ball phrase and I just bang it in there and then just move it about as it's getting bigger and then it lands at the right place. So this one was incorrect. Doesn't matter, I'll fill it in. This is the casting I'm playing with. I might fill those two in because I want to have a, a kind of like a, a, I don't know what you call it, like a raised edge going all the way around the outside of the ring. They're matching the back as well. There's going to be three going across, but that only goes to there. So I might have to scoop that up a little bit, bring it in and then narrow the back of the band. I don't know. Like I said, work, work, working like an artist. I'm not really thinking technically. It's just done by feel as I go along. And imagine it's a bit like a sculptor. They have a vision in their mind and they're just kind of working to end up with what they envisioned as a physical thing. That's more my style. Don't ask me why I always do skulls because I don't know. They just... They just come out of me like 
like a apples come out of an apple tree. I'm sure the apple tree doesn't know why apples come out of it. It's just an apple tree. I'm just a skull ring maker. <laughs> I think all creative people know how to work without thinking. It, like the ideas come from somewhere else. I don't know, where do ideas come from anyway? Because sometimes you can just be walking down a street and you have that, what they call like a moment of inspiration. Like where did that come from? Your, your thinking brain didn't give it to you, it come from somewhere else. Your thinking brain was probably judging people, complaining, wanting stuff, worrying. You need to learn to turn all that off to be creative. Also what kills creativity is always being distracted by your phone. Learn to leave the house without your phone. It does feel good walking about and knowing that Google and Facebook isn't tracking everything you're doing <laughs> and where you are. Also, psychologically, I've noticed something about living in Japan compared to London. It's much nicer not having CCTV cameras pointing at your face all the time. Definitely, it's like a weight off your, off your shoulders, not being, not feeling like you're, like someone doesn't trust you or just accusing you or suspecting you of doing something wrong. But I don't have that feeling anymore because I don't have a camera pointing at me everywhere I go. Okay, right, anyway, so this is ready for polishing now. I may as well just show you here. On the polishing motor, uh, I use this kind of bristle brush a lot to get things started, get the party started. Uh, I'll just move it around to, to do that. But more accurate than this are these. They call them pendant bristle brushes, in the UK at least. I call them chimney sweeps, because they look like that chimney sweep brush. Uh, they're more accurate, because obviously that bristle is quite hard and you can really dig into where, where you want individually each one. So I go around it with my pendant motor, one of these, so I'll show you here. As usual, do that. Not towards your face, because you'll get it all in your mouth. I brush down, not up. You don't want to change that a little scoop at all. And then I literally just give each one a little buff. They're already shiny, they don't need a lot of work. Oh, this is horrible doing this here. It's going around my face. So anyway, I won't do the whole thing on camera, but go all the way around it, both sides, loads of polish. Go down the middle as an important one because there are little sections of that that are going to show up uh, after the setting. So both sides, all the way around, down the middle, nice and thorough. After the black one, go on to a white one or a softer bristle, whatever colour you got. And on white gold, I always use green. I try not to use the red rouge because it gets very airborne and just sticks to everyone. It's like very fine, very sticky dust. It's horrible stuff. This is much nicer on the lungs and just the surrounding area. Uh, would I do that? Yes. And then get a felt disc if you do not have one. Uh, very good. Goes on the polishing motor and then you're just touching touching any flat sided piece of jewellery. Just skim it on that. Gets things really perfectly smooth. Because if you do too much polishing on that you might get little drag lines and it ruin your ring a little bit. And then there's very little work to do on this to get it done. Don't go mad because it's got to be set yet. It's going to get marked so you're going to have to do it all again. But I would Certainly get it to this stage, maybe not rouge it off and get it bright and shiny. But just so you know, no porosity holes are going to come up and 
it's uh, the, well, it's free of all lines and stuff. So after setting, there's very little work to do. Do a little bit of green in. Can you see? Oh, this is getting shiny now. These bristle brushes are nice when they uh, when they wear down a bit. They get a bit more accurate. I'm trying to buff in there, but also being careful not to round off my claws a little bit. I want these to be split claws. So it's going to be cut down in the middle of that chunky bit standing up and then whoop over the stone. Can you see that? So that's about the, uh, the stage I take it to. Um, I may buff the inside, but only only with the um, the Tripoli grease. It's nice, especially in platinum. This is gold, but especially in platinum, if you polish the whole thing to a certain level all the way around, uh, if you find any like porosity holes or any anything anything that needs fixing, you have the opportunity. While it's just a piece of metal, you have the opportunity to use seventeen hundred solder on it. Uh, to fix it properly because once you've got stone set in it you can't use those super high temp melting solders to fix things which are the best ones to use because they don't polish out as quickly as the other solders um, in gold i still recommend it just just get it a nice level because after setting if especially if you've got expensive delicate stones in there there's very little work to do afterwards when it's already been polished so I've done down the, down the middle, done the sides and all the little scallops and the sides are nice and flat. I can see they're polished now. I just did it with a disc. I'm not bothering with the, you know, with any of this stuff. So I'll, I'll ultrasonic that out and take it to my friend to have it set this coming Saturday. Again, thanks very much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, Remember to hit like and subscribe, that's great. And it works very well for my algorithm so more people can find me. Um, if you listen to all my waffle through the video, which is very unlikely, you will know why I'm wearing a pair of pajamas around my neck. It's just because it's cold and I'm next to a window. That's the story. <laughs> so here's the ring, it's finished. Um, up to the stage where it's ready for setting now. I'll get that done at the weekend. Uh, possibly in a couple of weeks, I'll have it completely finished and then do another video just on the final polishing. There's a few things to mention about that as well. And, and that's it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.